celebrate, I say, the birth day of the church, our birth day. Some years ago, I was in Evanston. And I saw a bookstore, which is no longer there, called Fabulous, named for a bookstore. And how can I remember that after all these years? But I do. Going in and looking at the shelves, I came across a book by an author unknown to me. significant in my life, that this author would be significant, because I did what I rarely do. I almost never write my name in books. But in this book is my name, my then address, and something I almost never ever do is the date which was May 1979. The book title was The Creative Encounter, An Interpretation of Religion and Social Witness. The author was Howard Thurman. I didn't know this man, but when I think about it, I might have known something about him because in 1953, Life magazine named him one of the 12 most significant religious leaders in the United States. That was 1953. And in 1978, just a year before I came across this book, Ebony Magazine named him one of the 50 most important leaders in African American history. And Lerone Bennett wrote an article in the 78 issue titled Howard Thurman. 20th century holy man. I vaguely remember that article, but didn't pay much attention to him. It's kind of testimony to things come alive for us when we're ready for them. Things come along when we're open to form. And so I understand my coming to know Howard Thurman as a gift of God. And he, in his writings, his lectures, have been nourishment and guidance for me these 42 years. Seems like yesterday, but that's how it is when you get off. Some of you might not even have been born then. And this year, 2021, we celebrate, we observe the 40th anniversary of Howard Thurman's death. And it seems as if he's more popular now that he's been in many years. There are two significant biographies that have been recently released and other books about him. So it's good to see that he's making an impact on our world still. Anyway, the book, The Creative Encounter, was first published in 1954, which was 25 years before I I have three copies of that book. The original one, which I bought in 1979, still has a label on it, $3.95. <laughs> I bought a second one some years later because I've marked this one up so much with, with uh, notes and underlines. 
lift up a few lines from that book that stay with me. One was, we come before God with the smell of life upon us. Isn't that wonderful? Or in coming before God, you should follow the grain in your own wood. Or he speaks of the aliveness of life. Life is alive. Or the human spirit is allergic to isolation. In this book, Thurman links the inwardness of religion with the outwardness of religion. They're inseparable. Something on the inside working on the outside, as the song would say. Basically, the core of the book is that spiritual experience wants to step over into everyday life. All of life
again, we're probably more familiar with the religion about Jesus. But why I lift up this religion of Jesus is, so I don't know who said it, but somebody pointed out, several people pointed out, you know, Jesus never said, worship me. But Jesus did constantly say, follow me. And the last words of our gospel today, Jesus is praying to his Father as he's preparing to leave this world. And he says, you sent me into the world, Father. And as you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. This past Thursday and in some places today, we are observing the Feast of the Ascension. Jesus is gone. Jesus is gone. And where is Jesus right now? He's at the right hand of the Father, we say. Jesus is now praying and interceding for you and me. And why? Because we are to do what Jesus did. Yes, we love Jesus. Yes, we worship Jesus. But most importantly, we follow Jesus. Because he's gone. And he has sent us to do what the Father sent him to do. We desperately Because the religion about Jesus can fool us into thinking that words about Jesus and knowing about Jesus is enough. And it's not. We are sent. Actually, the only reason we are called is to be sent. Ending of the service, the deacon will say, Go. Dismiss. You're going. Get out of here. Your work is out there into the world. And you know, churches might be like people in that an overly self involved person is pretty boring. I think the same might be said for Christian communities. An overly self-involved church is probably interesting only to those who are there and not attracted to others. So Jesus didn't send us into the church. I think Jesus called us into the church. But Jesus sends us into the world. The second text from Scripture today that I would like to use Thurman's words as an entrance into is Psalm 1. To do that, I'd like to tell a story that Thurman tells in several, several places. He attended seminary in Rochester, New York. And one night, the seminary, which was a little distance from the central part of the city, he was coming home late and he missed the streetcars. The streetcars were no longer running. Remember streetcars? <laughs> and so as he walked down the main street at night in the quietness, he could hear water flowing. And he said, as he walked along, he realized that he had heard it before but never paid attention to it because of the traffic that was moving all during the day. But as he walked that night, he said, I'm sure I hear water. 
And so the next day at breakfast, he told a professor, a fellow student, about that. And they said, yes, a branch of the Erie Canal runs beneath Main Street. Thurman uses that story to tell us that deep within our being, a river is broad flowing. A river runs through which you might say. And that with the traffic and the noise that the world sends us, we usually don't pay attention to it. We're usually not aware of it. But he spoke of the importance of discovering living water in the depths of our being and learning how to access that. That there's something deep within me that all the craziness of the world or of myself cannot destroy. That there was a place in me untouched by the pressures of life. That there is an inward sea deep within our being. And once you hit this deep flowing underground river, you're nourished by it and you can stand it. It's a tradition. 
traditional time to go with the disciples up to the upper room. Close the door. Go deep within the depths of our hearts together and ask the Lord to speak to my heart, Holy Spirit. Speak to my heart, but also commit ourselves to listen to our heart. Remember, in Scripture, the heart is not this organ, but the core of our being, my gut, my belly. From chapter 7 of the Gospel of John, on that day, the last day of the festival, while Jesus was standing there, he cried out, let anyone who is thirsty come to me. And let go one who believes in me drink. As the scripture has said, out of the believer's heart, out of the believer's belly, shall flow rivers said this about the Spirit, which believers in him were to receive. For as yet there was no Spirit, because Jesus was not yet glorified. Come, Holy Spirit, speak to my heart. Come, living waters, which Come, Holy Spirit, fall upon us as you did upon our Savior, Jesus Christ. And let the church say, Amen.